This is Apple's brand new 2020 10.2 inch iPad, which retails for $329. And this is Apple's 2020 11 inch iPad Pro, which retails for $800. So let's compare them to see if it's actually worth spending the extra cash for the Pro. Now I know what you're thinking, the iPad Pro should not be compared to the budget iPad because it's in a whole different league, but it's definitely worth seeing just how much more features and value you get by spending over twice the cash. Especially now that the budget iPad finally gets a really fast processor, as you'll see later on in this video. So let's jump right into this detailed comparison. There are six major differences between these two iPads design, cameras, displays, the usability of the Apple Pencil, the ports, and performance. So let's start with the design. The budget iPad feels a bit old with large white bezels all around, a Touch ID sensor, and classic chamfered edges. The Pro really stands out thanks to its modern design with squared off edges, a flat back, and black bezels on the front that hide the Face ID system, which by the way, works much better than you'd think compared to Touch ID. The Pro is also much thinner than the regular iPad, which is actually really impressive. One of the biggest design differences is that the iPad Pro gets two additional speakers on the top, so you get true stereo sound in landscape mode for a more immersive experience. Just listen for yourself to hear the volume difference. Now the cameras aren't as important, but the Pro comes with a 7 megapixel camera on the front instead of 1.2 megapixels on the basic iPad, as well as a 12 megapixel camera on the back instead of 8 megapixels, allowing for really sharp photos. The iPad Pro also now gets an ultra wide lens, which is a nice little bonus. And of course you get the new LiDAR scanner, which is useful for augmented reality apps and other things like that. The Pro also gets better microphones. So here's a quick comparison so you can hear the difference. This is a video and microphone quality test with the 2020 10.2 inch iPad. This is a selfie video and audio quality test with the 2020 iPad Pro. Moving on to display differences, the iPad Pro has a much more modern rounded corner display, which is much more immersive. You can also tell that the regular iPad has less contrast, even with the display off, and it's definitely much more reflective as well. The iPad Pro has a laminated display, which basically means that the screen is literally glued to the glass. The basic iPad does not have that, so you can notice a gap of air under the glass and above the display. This also makes it feel and sound a little bit hollow compared to the very solid feeling iPad Pro. The Pro's display is quite a bit brighter than the regular iPad's display, and it also supports P3 wide color gamut, so it can display a wider range of colors like this specific shade of red that you can't see on the regular iPad. The iPad Pro also gets true tone technology, so the white balance of the display adjusts to match your surroundings, so it's easier on the eyes. One of the biggest display features that the iPad Pro gets is ProMotion technology, which basically allows it to refresh at up to 120 hertz, so it feels incredibly smooth while swiping through the UI, and you can enjoy high refresh rate games. The cherry on top is that it automatically adjusts down to as low as 24 hertz to match the content you're viewing to help save battery life, while the regular iPad is always stuck at 60 hertz. ProMotion also helps the iPad Pro achieve a very low 9 milliseconds of latency compared to the budget iPad, which you can tell has a lot more lag in this slow motion clip. The Pro also gets the second generation Apple Pencil, which comes with a new design that supports wireless charging right on the side of the iPad Pro. It's a bit more expensive at $130 instead of $100 for the original pencil, 
but it's great that you don't have to deal with the old way of charging it. On top of that, the second gen pencil gets a new double tap gesture that allows you to quickly switch between tools. And yes, there are many third party apps that support it as well. And because the budget iPads display is not laminated, there's a noticeable gap between the pencil's tip and the drawing, especially when looking at it from an angle. Now moving on to the ports, the basic iPad gets a headphone jack, which the Pro doesn't get. Instead, the Pro gets a USB-C port, which is really nice because you get more power for connecting accessories and storage drives, compared to the very limited lightning port on the budget iPad. Now before we move on to comparing the performance, there are a couple of spec differences that you need to know, but first be sure to check out our Apple product merch, like our Apple product t-shirt and our mask down in the merch shelf below. Surprisingly, the budget iPad now comes with a brand new 20 watt USB-C power adapter, while the 2020 iPad Pro gets the older 18 watt USB-C charger, so that was definitely unexpected. The Pro gets Bluetooth 5 instead of 4.2, and it also gets Wi-Fi 6 with simultaneous dual band for a more reliable connection. Now finally getting into performance, the 2020 iPad Pro's A12Z Bionic chip is still the best mobile chip ever made even better than the new A14 chip and the new iPad Air, which we are gonna be getting, so subscribe right now if you wanna see those comparison videos. The 2020 iPad, on the other hand, has now finally been updated with the A12 chip, which is much more powerful than the previous A10 Fusion chip, but the iPad Pro is still around 80% faster in terms of the processor. Now I also tested the graphics performance and this is by far the biggest difference. The iPad Pro's A12Z chip is around 2.3 times more powerful in the metal test, which is a massive difference even though the iPad is still much faster than it was before. Now I know you're gonna say it's obviously much faster because it's much more expensive, but that graphics score on the iPad Pro is better than Intel's brand new 10th gen chip in the top end 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. On top of that, the iPad Pro gets double the RAM, six gigabytes compared to three gigabytes on the basic iPad. So it's gonna be better for heavy multitasking and things like photo and video editing. Playing Call of Duty Mobile, the basic iPad now runs it very well thanks to that new chip. So it's a great gaming experience and the graphics still look really nice. On the iPad Pro, you can basically max out all of the settings and never have to worry about any dropped frames. The main benefit of the iPad Pro is for playing games that support 120 frames per second, making it just about the best gaming experience you can get on any Apple device or any tablet. And you also get stereo speakers, which allow you to hear enemies' footsteps around you in first-person shooter games. And of course, this performance will also translate over into the overall feel of using the iPad itself and other professional workflow apps. Now, the final thing I wanna compare before we answer the original question is keyboard case support. The absolute best option for the budget iPad is the Logitech Combo Touch which comes with a very solid and protective case, a pretty nice keyboard with a row of function keys at the top, and a built-in trackpad, which supports three-finger gestures, just like you get on a MacBook. The best part is that it connects using the smart connector, which means no lag, no batteries, and no having to connect using Bluetooth. So for $150, that case is a great value since it basically turns this iPad into a laptop replacement that beats out a lot of Chromebooks. Now for the iPad Pro, you have two great options. The first is a new Magic Keyboard, which is basically the best keyboard case ever made, coming with a super nice modern design, which attaches using nothing but magnets, and the hinge design allows the iPad Pro to float in the air closer to you for a more convenient experience. It also comes with a USB-C charging port built into the hinge, which allows you to use the main port for connecting accessories and storage drives, so it's perfect for power users. The only downside is that it costs a hefty $300. But luckily, Logitech also created the Folio Touch keyboard case for only 160 bucks, which is almost identical to the Combo Touch 
for the budget iPad, so that's a great choice if you want to save some cash. So with all of that said, let's finally answer the original question. Should you spend the extra cash on the iPad Pro? Well, first off, it comes with 128 gigs of storage at the base price compared to only 32 gigs with the budget iPad. So if you match both of them up with 128 gigs, there's now only a $370 difference, which obviously is still a lot more to spend, but based on all the advantages, it's definitely worth it for some people. Like for example, if you take drawing very seriously, buy the iPad Pro because it works just so much better. And if you want very high-end performance, the iPad Pro is the fastest tablet ever made. And if you care a lot about display quality, the cameras, the microphones, or speaker quality, the iPad Pro is definitely the better choice. And since it's packing the new modern design with the square edges and the USB-C port, it'll still feel fresh and modern years down the road, while the design of the basic iPad is starting to look outdated, and it'll most likely be redesigned next year. So basically, if you're a power user, or you care about having the best display, the best performance, or you really care about the new modern design, then spending the extra cash on the iPad Pro is definitely worth it for you. However, there are also some really great reasons to buy the basic 10.2 inch iPad, like if you're on a budget. The A12 chip now makes it feel much more snappy for day-to-day -day use, and it's also more than fast enough for even the newest games on the App Store like Call of Duty Mobile. And if you mainly want to consume media like YouTube or Netflix, the iPad is going to have no issues at all for that, apart from the speakers, which aren't as good, but you can always connect headphones or your AirPods. That new A12 chip is going to allow it to run very fast and reliably for years, and it's also a much better choice compared to a Chromebook thanks to the excellent new Logitech Combo Touch keyboard case, which makes it the perfect budget laptop replacement. But to answer the original question, because of that A12 chip, I honestly have to say that the budget 10.2 inch iPad for $329 is now a better choice this year for almost everyone being the best bang for the buck iPad we've ever seen. But all of that might change when the iPad Pro finally gets updated again, which might actually happen later this year, according to Ming-Chi Kuo. So if you're excited for that, go ahead and tap the like button below and click the circle above to subscribe. And if this video helped to make a decision on which iPad to buy, please use our Amazon links down below to help support this channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.